Ladies and gentlemen, it is officially fantasy draft season. <laughs> And I am super excited. I know in my leagues that we've already done about three drafts. So I'm already in, in fantasy mode for the year. I'm so excited for the year to start. But in this video, I thought I would give a good blueprint about how your dynasty fantasy football draft should go, what the order of operations should be in terms of players picked. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get into that. But first, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. And if you guys want to see more fantasy football content on this channel, please let me know in the comments down below. I really, really like fantasy football. I would love to make more videos for you guys. So if you guys want to see them, just let me know. But starting off hot, let's talk about the pick 1-1, one, one, the coveted pick, the cream de la crop. Who are you taking at pick 1-1? One, one? Well, I would say that this is the only TBD pick because while Caleb Williams is a phenomenal option, he plays the most important position at quarterback. He is, you know, especially in super flex leagues, a guy that could be really, really valuable for you. Um, certainly, you know, he was the number one overall pick in the actual draft as well. Certainly, you cannot pass up the opportunity to take Marvin Harrison, a, a receiver with his kind of skill set, drafted as highly as he was um, with his intangibles. He, at, at for now, has a stable quarterback in Kyler Murray. So I think 1-1 one, one is going to depend on what your team needs. Do you need a quarterback? Go Caleb Williams. Do you need help at receiver? Go with Marvin Harrison. So those would be the first two picks in the draft, and they should be for everybody's draft. But I think it's your discretion on who you pick at 1-1. One, one. Going into 1-3, though, I think this pick pretty universally has to be Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels is going to a Washington team that is not very good, um, unfortunately, but I think they have good weapons. Sam Howell was able to put up a lot of fantasy numbers last year with this team, and Jaden Daniels has what Sam Howell doesn't, and that is a pair of fast legs. The dude can run. I mean, we all know this. You know, fantasy quarterbacks that are able to run just have really, really high ceilings um, in fantasy um, and again, you look at it, is Washington going to be a great team next year? No, but I think with Kling Cliff Kingsbury's offense, with these receivers that they have, I think that Jaden Daniels is ready to have a really good year. At number four, I would go with Roma Dunze. I think out of all the first round receivers, he probably has the best quarterback. Um, and again, is he going to be the best in year one? No, but Dynasty isn't a one year rental. We are going to be playing for the future a little bit. I think once Keenan Allen is out of there, out of Chicago, he's pretty clearly going to be fighting for targets with DJ Moore, um, and Caleb Williams is going to be able to get them the ball, hopefully. Um, I, I think that Roma Dunze is an excellent pick at pick four. Pick five, I would go with Drake May. I think Drake May is an excellent pick. But again, you have to think about the situation. Uh, the Patriots don't have a lot going on offensively right now. Their offensive line is not very good. They don't have great receivers. They don't have a good running game. Um, so I would say you're really banking on the talent of Drake May and not so much the situation, which, again, they can always fix the situation, which is good, but just be wary about it uh, in year one. Speaking of bad situations, let's talk about Malik Neighbors. Um, I do not like his fit in the Giants. I don't think Daniel Jones is a very good quarterback. I kind of made this point in my last video about Marvin Harrison where I think defenses are going to almost zero in on him because he's probably going to be their only threat offensively. Um, so that might limit his production a little bit, but he's still the most explosive receiver in this draft. Um, he's got a pretty good coach in Brian Dable. But again, I, I worry about the Giants offense. I worry about, you know, Daniel Jones. Uh, that, that does scare me a little bit. But I think it's worth the 1-6 if you have it in your draft. At 1-7, kind of the opposite of that, um, a great situation for a receiver would be Xavier Worthy. Um, think, you know, Deshaun Jackson. When you think about Andy Reid um, and Patrick Mahomes, obviously they need a receiver bad. Uh, even though they won the Super Bowl last year, like they had a massive hole at receiver. Andy Reid is going to be able to maximize this guy's talent. Patrick Mahomes is obviously going to be able to get him the ball in ideal situations. I think Xavier Worthy's situation is the best that it could have possibly been for his skill set, and I would honestly take him in the 1-7. At 1-8, this is a guy that I've kind of tossed and turned about a lot because I don't like his situation at all, but I think the talent is just so good. It's bound to break through. Give me Brock Bowers at the 1-8. Um, again, going to the Raiders was not a good fit. Um, they already have a tight end. They don't have a quarterback. It's just an odd fit to me. I don't think they have an offensive coordinator who is capable of utilizing his skills to the maximum degree in Luke Getze. Um, but again, Brock Bowers is just such a such a talented player. He's so good at so many things. He'll find a way to make it work. I would definitely take him at the 1-8. At the 1-9, I would go ahead and take Keon Coleman. Um, going to Buffalo was massive for him, having a fantastic quarterback that's able to get in the ball in so many different spots. Again, Keon Coleman... 4-6-1 speed, you're thinking, hey, he's, not the, he's not the best receiver, you know, at just, you know, running past defenders. 
But you, when you look at his body control, when you look at some of the routes that he ran, when you look at how solid his hands are, I mean, I think you get really, really excited about the potential of Keon Coleman. And, and I honestly believe that Josh Allen is a perfect fit for him as a Stephon Diggs replacement. I would go ahead and take him at the 1-9. At 110, I would take another receiver. I would go with Brian Thomas. Are you noticing a trend that this receiver class is pretty damn good? Because it is. Uh, at the 110, I would go with Brian Thomas. Again, a good fit in Jacksonville. They took him in the first round. He's got such a great um, size, speed, I guess, ratio to him. Right? He's like 6'3", 6'4", ran like a 4'3", 3'40". Uh, phenomenal. Um, going into an offense with Trevor Lawrence that I think is just trying to get back on track this year. And I think that they do that with Brian Thomas. So I'm very excited to see what they're able to do with him. Um, I think that he'll he's pretty – easily their number one wide receiver um, just because Calvin Ridley left in free agency for the Tennessee Titans. So I like Brian Thomas there at the 110. At 111, another receiver that I'm really excited about their situation is Donnie Mitchell going to the Indianapolis Colts. I think that he is, um, you know, maybe not better than Michael Pittman right away, but I think he's probably a better route runner. Um, I think he's more of an explosive play guy. And I think, again, just the way that Shane Steichen is going to mesh him in the offense with Anthony Richardson I'm just super excited about it. I, I can't wait to see that. Um, at number 12, I would go with Lad McConkey, especially if you're in a PPR league. I think that this fit is very good with Justin Herbert. Again, Quentin Johnston proved that he wasn't a reliable target last year for Justin Herbert. Um, so getting a guy like that, they traded up to get him in the draft, basically was like a back-end first-rounder. You know, he's picked like 34, 35, whatever he was. Um, so obviously you got high draft capital. You have a really good situation with Justin Herbert. They drafted Justin Herbert a better offensive line, meaning he has more time to throw. And again, I think Lad McConkey is a really good underneath guy. He's really good at like, he's going to be a chain mover. He's going to be a big play maker. So I think that's really good for fantasy. I pick 112, I think that is really good value. Um, either 112 or or 202 if you're in a 10-man league. Kind of depends. But I'm talking about, like, the overall pick. Um, at pick number 13 overall, you probably go with J.J. McCarthy. Again, I'm not the biggest J.J. McCarthy fan, but I think his draft capital plus his situation justifies a top 13 pick. Um, he's going into a situation with a phenomenal head coach, two really, really good wide receivers, a good tight end, and a pretty good offensive line. Also, he's going to play in a dome. So I think that it, the cards really you know, folded the absolutely perfect way for J.J. McCarthy. This is a quarterback's dream situation. Um, do I love J.J. McCarthy? No. He's athletic enough to get some running in the NFL done, but don't expect him to be like a Jaden Daniels. Don't expect him to be like, you know, a high upside like a Justin Fields. Um, I think he'll be fine. I don't love the player, but I love the situation for sure. At number 14, I'm going to go with Xavier. I'm sorry. I'm going to go with um, Brooks, the running back um, out of Texas, going to the Carolina Panthers. Now, the reason that I had to put him at 14 was because he's the first running back on my board. He was the first running back taken in the draft, and because the situation in Carolina is definitely better than it was last year. They invested heavily into that interior of the, of the offensive line, um, so at least there hopefully will be some running lanes open. They're going to try to establish the run because Dave Canales is a Pete Carroll disciple, and if there's one thing that man wants to do, it is run the fucking football, except for at the one-yard line in the Super Bowl. Um, but I'd like Jonathan Brooks going to the Carolina Panthers. I think the situation is pretty good for him, and I'd take him at, at 13. I'm sorry, 14. Um, at pick 15, I would take Xavier Leggett. Um, again, another Carolina Panther. This guy was taken with the last pick overall in the first round. Um, he's just going to be, I think, a reliable target for, for Bryce Young. they got to get something going offensively. I think I really liked Xavier Leggett's talent. Um, in, in the pre-draft process, just his combination of size and speed and, 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 and everything like that. I really liked him. So good for the Panthers. At pick 16, I would go with Trey Benson, another running back off the board. Again, he's going to probably be behind James Conner the whole year for the Arizona Cardinals, but I don't necessarily mind that. I think long-term he does have a lot of upside. Was, was my running back one in this class, but the offensive line for the Arizona Cardinals is not great, so I had to bump him down a little bit. At pick 17, you might be noticing, you're like, where the fuck is Michael Penix? I'm going to put Michael Penix down there. Um, again, this is a sit-and-wait type of guy. This is a guy you take, and you kind of understand that he's not going to contribute for your team for probably two to three years. And if you're in a position where you're solid at quarterback and you want a security plan for the future, I think that's totally fine. But if you're in a win-now mode and you're looking for players that are going to help you in 2024, Michael Penix just probably is not that guy, unfortunately. Um, pick 18, I'll go with Troy Franklin. Um, I think that the Broncos are so devoid of wide receiver talent that he's probably de facto wide receiver one at this point, even with Cortland Sutton still there, even with Marlon Mims still there. Um, his connection with Bo Nix helps for sure. They already have a built-in chemistry from Oregon. So I think that he's probably worth, you know, the 2-8 slash 2-6, wherever, you know, however big your, your league is. Um, at pick 19, I would go with Blake Corum. 
I think Blake Horm is a touchdown scorer. He's going to a really good situation in the Rams in terms of offensive line, in terms of offensive play caller. He will, however, be fighting with snaps um, with Kyron Williams, who was really good last year. But again, I think that he will mix into the rotation, and I do think that he does have touchdown upside. Number 20 is Ricky Purcell. Um, one of the more puzzling picks, in my opinion, uh, I'm not going to lie to you, but if Brandon Ayuk slash and or Debo Samuel get traded in the near future, that opens up a big spot um, for production for Ricky Purcell. Obviously, again, consistent quarterback playing Brock Purdy, amazing offensive coordinator slash play caller in Kyle Shanahan. And I really like that situation for him. Number 21 is Jatavian Sanders. Um, I thought this was a guy that it would be uh, a, a people that love him in fantasy. You know, he will be loved within the fantasy community. Goes to the Carolina Panthers, uh, was the third tight end off the board. I think he's probably got the second most fantasy upside outside of Brock Bowers. And again, if you're taking a flyer on a guy, you know, late in the second round, I think that this guy's probably worth it. Um, hopefully he can be a playmaker for that Carolina Panthers offense. Then I would have Bo Nix. I think Bo Nix is trash. I think he's going to a terrible situation. I think Sean Payton kind of lost his fastball. But again, the one bright side is that he probably will be the day one starter. Um, and they did invest, you know, a top 12 pick in him. So he does have some draft capital security for you. Um, then I would have Malachi Corley of the New York Jets. Again, that Jets offense does scare me a little bit. I do not like their play caller in Nathaniel Hackett. But if Aaron Rodgers can be healthy next year, he's a pretty solid wide receiver too outside of Garrett Wilson. And then for my last pick, pick 24 overall in the draft, I would go with Jalen Wright. Now, there's a lot of mystery on what's going on in this Miami Dolphins backfield. Is Raheem Mostert still going to be the top guy? Did Devon A. Chain do enough last year to be that guy? Or maybe did they bring in Jalen Wright to be a more consistent workhorse back? I don't know. I have no idea, actually. But I do think that it's interesting. The play caller, Mike McDaniel, proved that he is down to do some weird shit. And you know what? Jalen Wright is really fast, so that fits in well with the Miami offense. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video today um, talking about fantasy football and the draft. If you guys want more fantasy content, like I said, make sure to drop it in the comments down below. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.